One of the number one complaints since the launch of Tekken 8 is how weak Steve Fox is. Now, I don't have a strong enough opinion on the matter to weigh in, but I do know that I personally want people to explore the character, explore the tech, and really develop the meta before we start going for any buffs or nerfs or issuing a bunch of complaints about the character, right? And kind of on time, two hours ago, new Steve tech just dropped. I want to talk about why this tech is so revolutionary. It allows him to go into peekaboo stance from Lionheart stance. So if you're an experienced Steve player, you'll be excited about this. If you have no idea what I just said, I'm about to give a little breakdown on the Lionheart stance and get you caught up. So if you want to just see the tech, I'll link the tweet below and you can jump to the time step ahead and see what I think about it. But first, let's break down the Lionheart stance and why this is even important in the first place, okay? So Steve got a new stance in Tekken 8 called Lionheart, and he's basically forced to enter it from certain moves. Okay, so for example, his stomp move here, he goes into Lionheart. And as you can see, I've set Reyna to respond to any attack or block with her power crush. And that will become apparent very quickly why that's relevant. Let's check it, let's take a look at these two moves. Steve's down back 3-2 puts him in Lionheart, and no matter what option he picks, that's not a Lionheart option. No matter what option he picks, Reyna's armor will beat it. So just so you can see the options, I've just shown all three here and what it looks like. He has a heat engaging mid, a launching uppercut, and a guard breaking high, okay? And from these situations, I'll show the frame data now, he is plus seven. So when he lands these two moves, he's plus seven, and that's not enough time to get off his attacks before Reyna can use an armored move. Now it's not all hopeless, Steve does have some counterplay. He can go into a weave stance and dodge. He can re weave right, he can weave left, depending on the timing, sometimes it'll dodge, sometimes it won't. He can also duck forward. But many Steve players feel that this isn't, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I landed a hit, I won the interaction, why am I guessing again to win the next interaction? Right, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So this situation is more, I wouldn't call it favorable for the defender, but it's not really fun for Steve to not be in a dominating position after winning a mix-up like that, or winning a neutral interaction. So these situations give him plus seven. He has some other situations, okay? When he's in heat, I'm gonna set Reyna to block. If his heat smash is blocked, he gets plus eight, which is a little better because now the heat engager is guaranteed. However, his other moves don't work. They still get beaten by the armor. And again, we still have the weave options after Lionheart. Um, once again, next option, just going up the frames, plus 11. So here we have an even more favorable situation, still not perfect. While standing 2-2 guarantees the uppercut. He also still has the heat engager. But his guard break will still lose if Reyna mashes armor as quickly as possible. And finally, the last like main Lionheart situation um, is up back two. When this one hits, he can do whatever he wants. All of his moves are guaranteed. No problem at all. Right? So Steve has different situations that put him in Lionheart with different levels of advantage. However, if he wants to beat the power crush at the like lower frames, he has to do a stance cancel. This is forward three to down back to duck cancel and then block. That's a lot of inputs just to block, right? Because in Lionheart, he can't block. That's the point. If I just stand there, she'll hit me. So that's the Lionheart stance, brief rundown. Let's look at why this tech is relevant. Unlike the Lionheart stance, Steve can block in peekaboo stance. So if I do a peekaboo jab here and stay in peekaboo, he can still block. And this stance is powerful because this is kind of his mix-up stance, right? He has low pokes. He has big launchers. He has a throw out of here. So this is his powerful mix-up stance that gives him frame advantage and lets him keep pushing his offense. Steve players love this stance. And now, from Lionheart, he can enter this stance. Let's check out this video from Poultry. Again, it will be linked below. This is incredible. This is, this is brand new cutting edge tech. Whenever you're transitioning into Steve's Lionheart stance, you can actually cancel the stance into his peekaboo stance by watching his right hand as it drops down to his waist and as it visibly begins to rise back up you want to input forward three tilde three plus four so what is this input he's saying when steve lowers his right arm and is about to lift it up again you hit forward three tilde three plus four this is just saying you want to plink it as quickly as possible 
So this is a... It, I don't know if it's a glitch, but it's a common phenomenon we're seeing in Tekken 8 a lot, where hitting an input, uh, hitting one button of two inputs, and then plinking the second, like, simultaneous input gives you a different input altogether that's not normally possible. Devil Jin has a combo extension off of this. Horong has a throw situation off of this. Those, are, those can be separate videos. But um, it's a common mechanic we're seeing more and more, and people are starting to, I don't want to say abuse it, but leverage it to find new options. So Steve is getting peekaboo four. out of Lionheart. Hold forward and three, and then you press four on the very next frame. Steve can access his peekaboo moves immediately after entering the stance. Now there's seemingly no buffer, so while you can be late with your input, you should avoid being early or you might get something else. Here's a quick showcase of some of the things that you get access. So he's saying there's no buffer, which means you can't do this in advance. In Tekken inputs, I'll just show you really quick. In Tekken inputs, you can usually do things kind of in advance, right? So if I do this, I'll show my hand cam, actually. This will be the best way to demonstrate this. If I show my hand cam here, you'll see how early I can hit the button and Steve will still register the input. Do you see that? That's me using the attack buffer, where it'll store my button input and then launch the attack when it's available. That mechanic is not available for movement options, right? So if I do this, uh, I'm going to set Reyna to not punish me just to demonstrate this. If I set Reyna to block, say I jab and then backdash. You see how he's not backdashing? Movement generally can't be buffered, but attacks can. And in a similar vein, this stance cannot be buffered. It has to be done as soon as physically available. There's no like software assistance. That's the best way to put it. So that's how the mechanics of the stance work. Look at what he pulls off with this stance. This is amazing. So Azusain is responding with Power Crush. And now off of the Lionheart back one, two, he gets the grab and grabs are guaranteed against Power Crush. Punch parry into the back turn. Back turn catch off the punch parry into a full combo. 71 damage. Heat smash. That's also a good option. Heat smashing out of the peekaboo to beat power crush. Heat smashes beat power crushes. Okay, now Azusena is not power crushing. She's doing down forward one. Just a mid punch. Punch parry. And the back roll catch we saw earlier. Counter hit. This is really, really cool. This is so precise. That input is so difficult. Wow. Peekaboo forward one plus two. Peekaboo jabs. Peekaboo grab again. So he can grab so fast the down forward one doesn't even hit him. This is really cool stuff. So not only is this In brand new opinion, tech. The most powerful options that you get access to are the ability. Not only is this brand new tech, he's executing it really, really proficiently. And demonstrating the practical use cases right away. This is awesome. So he's going to talk about the best options, I think. In wow. my opinion, the most powerful options that you get access to are the ability to interrupt power crushes from plus three and up with peekaboo throw, the ability to use peekaboo down forward two as your mid mix up option from your plus 11 situations, which is a more flexible launcher than Lionheart 2, given it doesn't tornado, it's only minus 10 and you oh. can't carry it because it's an elbow. The ability to use peekaboo. So, what he just said, what he just said, uh, he used a lot of words and I was struggling to keep up too. He was saying, normally when you're in Lionheart, your only option is this mid-launcher. And this mid-launcher isn't that good compared to normal mid-launchers because it uses your tornado right away. So that means you don't get a combo extension again. You only get one tornado per combo. But with this new tech, you can do this launcher. And I don't know the combo. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend to know this combo. Like this and then this. I guess something like that. But you get to use the tornado here. So with this technique, you get a more powerful launcher that is safer. This... Uh, this uh, Lionheart 2 is minus 13, so they can get like a decent size punish. But this Peekaboo down forward 2 is only minus 10. They can only jab you. So, incredible development to get a more powerful launcher. Let's see what else he has. 2 as a Sabaki and counter hit launcher, depending on the speed of the input and the transition. Sorry, what do you say? The ability to use Peekaboo down forward 2 as your okay, so we just talked about. option from your plus 11 situations. Which is a more flexible launcher than Lionheart 2, given it doesn't tornado, it's only minus 10, and you can't parry it because it's an elbow. 
the ability to use Peekaboo 2 as a Sabaki and counter hit launcher depending on the speed of the input okay. and the transition tool that you use. The punch parry. And last but not least, access to a homing, unparryable, unpower crushable, unburstable, plus 8 on block mid that loops the situation <laughs> that can also frame trap jabs from plus 11. So so, so his, his, his commentary didn't line up with the visuals here, but he basically said uh, there's three options that are now available. So um, I'll scroll down. I think you, I think you understand the, the heat, the Lionheart stance already. So I don't need to show this in excruciating detail, but the new tech, what is valuable? You get peekaboo down forward two, elbow. So can't be parried minus 10 keeps tornado. You get, um, you get the peekaboo throws, throws to counter, um, power crushes. Although that's not the top priority. What was the other option he said? Let me see. Well, unpower crushable, unburst. Oh, he's talking about the heat smash. Yes. So heat smash, which is no, like can't parry, can't burst uh, using the heat burst, which is like a enhanced armor. Um, can't step repeat situation right like this is this is really really good so he can go peekaboo and then do the heat smash out of it and then what's the last thing he mentioned uh or he was before this and in the most powerful options that you can oh it was the punch parry that's right that's right so it wasn't throws he talked about punch parry or tekken players call it sabaki basically what this is uh let's see if i can show this i don't know if this will work on reina here um, i'm gonna set her to punish again this if this is treated as a punch, I should be able to punch parry that, but that might not be available. Okay, yeah, so it's not available. Um, Steve's move here basically auto parries punches. So if I want to demonstrate that, what I should do is set Reina. This is a quick little mini practice mode guide, I guess. I'm just going to record Reina to jab after she blocks this. Right, so now when she blocks my attack as Steve, she will jab and check this out. I'm going to do this and then punch parry it absorbed her punch and puts her in this animation so what um poultry is saying is that you now have access to this from his lion heart situations you get the punch parry you get a better launcher that can't be parried and then you have the huge advantage unparryable unsteppable unheat burstable heat smash that re loops the situation again very very impressive tech let me just see if i can even do it I don't even know if I can execute this. I'm going to set Reyna to block. I'm going to stomp her, and then I'm going to see if I can grab her using this tech. So I don't even think I can do this. I have to make sure she's not uh, jabbing, but doing power crush instead. So I save that option here. I have no idea. This is my first time actually trying it. So what I'm understanding, though, is it's probably really hard. If I want to pull it off, I should probably go for this plus 14 option here. Yeah, this is so tight. So I'm getting that ducking forward. You see how he's ducking forward. We don't want that. We want him to just instantly lean forward like this. So I'll try a few more times. If I don't get it, we'll move on. But this is such a cool. Oh, I don't know if you caught that. I got him to go into the stance, but I didn't get the, uh, the move to come out in time. See that? This is what it should look like. And it's like a one frame link. So this is pretty tight. I'm listen. I played Noctis in Tekken 7. I don't have the execution for this. If you guys think you could do it, let me know. I, I want to see more people using this tech. This is really cool to me. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get this in the span of this video. But I wanted to put it out as quickly as possible. Give you guys uh, something to chew on. I hope that we don't over nerf or over buff characters too quickly. I think that this kind of discovery is so cool and is only happening because people are trying to problem solve in this game. So. Um, that's my little soapbox, I guess. I love leaving games alone as long as possible and letting people make discoveries and advancements. So, to me, this Steve development is one of the coolest pieces of tech I've ever seen. Again, I'll link Poultry's tweet below. Try it out. Let me know if you get it. And again, there are other, uh, game mechanics that use this. I'll demonstrate this really quick before we go. Um, Devil Jin has a very similar mechanic relying on, um, these, this double input technique. So let me let me let me type it out real quick while this is loading. Um, just last thing here. Uh, it's forward plus three and then tilde three plus four. So it's very very tight. How Devil Jin leverages this is in his combos. Um, 
is if he holds okay let me turn off that punishment setting is if devil Jin has a technique to access instant while standing three this is his while standing three and access it you hold three in advance i'm going to turn on my hand cam you hold three in advance and just do a crouch dash four now, I don't know if in the game engine this functions the same way, but it's very clear that the game is treating two button inputs differently than single button inputs, right? So that is the basis of this mechanic. And Devil Jin basically gets a combo off of it like this or something like that. I don't even know what the combo is. Yeah, he gets like that float. Um, and then Huarong has another throw that I probably won't be able to demonstrate where he's able to do a right flamingo punch into an instant grab. So there are a few techniques using this. Um, really encourage people to keep exploring. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much. Let me know in the comments if there's other techniques I missed. Uh, let me know if you got any questions about this and leave a like if you enjoyed this kind of content. I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around. I'll see you next time. Peace.